Well, today we pick up our study in the book of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning in verse number 1. And Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, meaning he served in the tabernacle. And the word of the Lord was precious. It was rare in those days. There was no open vision. God was not talking much in those days. And that is because few were listening. Who wants to talk if no one is listening? God doesn't, so he didn't. Two, and it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. It was night, and Eli was almost blind. Verse 3, And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, Eli and Samuel were sleeping in their rooms in the tabernacle complex. It was a normal night up until now anyway, but God is about to break through. Every now and then, God plans an event that changes a person's life forever. This was an event like that for Samuel, and I think for, for Eli too, to a lesser degree. Verse 4, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. This was no dream. It was a loud, distinct voice, and Samuel heard it. Someone called. And since Eli was the only one around, Samuel figured it was Eli. 5, and he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for you called me. And he, Eli, said, I called not. Lie down again. Well, he went and laid down. Thought it was Eli, but it had been the voice of God. Samuel's mother had dedicated him to the Lord. And now it's time for Samuel to meet with God personally and to confirm that commitment himself. Your parents can dedicate you to the Lord. You can dedicate your child, your baby, to the Lord when they are born. That's a wonderful thing to do. But, you know, it's every person for themselves before God. They, At some point, when they reach the age of accountability, they have to make a commitment to Christ as well. Six. And the Lord called yet again Samuel, and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for you did call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. God doesn't have vocal cords, and yet his voice was loud and clear, which can only mean one thing, God can produce words out of nothing. We can't. If, if our vocal cords are shot or strained, we either can't talk at all or it's hard to understand us. But God can speak loud and clear without vocal cords, which just proves once again that God can make anything out of nothing. When we think something can't happen, it, it can still happen. Seven. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Samuel had never heard God's voice before. So he didn't know it. He didn't recognize it. But he's going to learn to know it. See, once you start talking to God and he starts talking to you, your life will never be the same. Eight. 
And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for you did call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Samuel still had not figured out that it was God even after the third call. I know this for sure. God wasn't calling Samuel because he was a genius. God doesn't put us on the shelf as long as we have a heart for him. Even if the obvious sometimes goes right over our heads, he doesn't put us on the shelf for that. Now, if we don't have a heart for him, that's a different story. Verse 9. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call you, that you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Samuel listened to Eli. Eli was his authority on earth, which is one reason God will use Samuel. In order to be in authority, we must be under authority. That means respect God and those who he has put over us. Verse 10, And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Now, the other times, it had only been the voice of God. This time, God actually came and stood in the room by Samuel. Verse 11. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone who hears it shall tingle. I like how God uses slang here. God says, I'm, I'm going to make people's ears tingle. That's like saying their flesh is going to crawl. And when God starts talking like that, people better hang on tight. 12. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. Notice. The very first prophetic message Samuel must deliver is a message of doom to his boss, to his spiritual leader. When you are called to proclaim God's word, it's not long before you realize that God plays hardball and there are some unpleasant things that must be said. 13. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity of which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not. Now, many think that God is someone who just gets tacked onto their life on Sunday morning for an hour. That is wrong. God is a God who will not accept second place not without causing trouble for those who put him there, he won't. 14. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. Eli and sons could offer their entire herd of sheep and anything else that they had and it's not going to stop the punishment that's coming from God. They can add a pail of tears and it won't change things. Satan loves to tell people, go ahead, sin. It doesn't matter. It matters. 15. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. And I can see Samuel. 
not wanting to deliver this message. I can understand that. But it is wrong to go with your feelings and not do it. It doesn't pay to put off what God wants you to do, no matter how unpleasant it may be. Because that's disobedience. It's disobedience plus we're just going to feel bad until we do it anyway. 16. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. Eli already knew that he was in trouble with God. His only question was, when will God's hammer fall? Sometimes those who we think do not want to hear the truth actually do want to hear it. And Eli was one of those. 17, and he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto you? I pray you, hide it not from me. God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto you. That's a passion for truth, which everyone should have. Tell me the truth, whether I like it or not. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. I used to take Chalk's vitamins when I was little. Oh, man, I hated those things. And truth is sort of like Chalk's vitamins. Tastes terrible, but it's good for you. 18. And Samuel told him every whit and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good. It wasn't easy for Samuel to say everything God told him to say. It's not easy to speak God's word when it involves judgment. But a person needs to remember that judgment from God only occurs because someone has rebelled against the God, and therefore they deserve it. 19. And Samuel grew. So Samuel's now a young man. And the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Samuel measured his words carefully, and God blessed him. Samuel spoke the word of God, and God stood by those words and stood by him. God will never leave us hanging when we boldly proclaim his word. 20. And all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. They knew he was a prophet. Because you don't have to convince people that you are walking with God. People will just know it. Samuel lived. Samuel spoke for God. And people could see that. It was self-evident to anyone who had any amount of discernment at all. 21. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So now the Lord begins to speak to Samuel on a regular basis. But notice what it says here. Very important. The Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. God does the same thing today. He reveals himself through his word. Getting to know God is very easy. Read and study his holy word. Nothing complicated about that. 